episode nine evil <laughs> patrol nine episodes in and now we're at evil patrol <laughs> like this is whole thing been evil but it's your boy icon with some dc tv and this uh this 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 is this is interesting uh, I have some feelings. I, I definitely have some feelings about this one. So this episode starts, because in the last episode, it ended with Rita confronting Madame Rouge and the two of them are having their standoff. Rita tried to recruit, you know, like the like the Doom Patrol. She tried to recruit like their other personas and they all dipped on her. So she went in alone and she's talking to Madame Rouge and, you know, they're having their conversation. They're just like, oh, you betrayed me and everything. You betrayed the sisterhood of Dada. And then Madame Rouge was just like, well, I don't know what you want from me, Bindi, because <laughs> she's like, she said, what you want from me, I can't. She's like, what you want from me, I can't give you. And then she was like, oh, what I want is dead. And then he, you know, and then she was just like, well, she was like, you know, I don't know what to tell you. She's like, sucks to be you. But she said, like, listen, I got my memories back and I know now what I have to do. She was just like, screw you guys. I'm about to rejoin the Brotherhood of Evil. And then, you know, we're going to take down Niles Coulter. And then Rita was like, ah, oh, pish tosh. She was like, it's just like Niles defeated the Brotherhood of Evil. And there's nothing that you can do. She was like, it's all, she's like, all your best laid plans have gone to waste. And the whole time I'm sitting here, I'm like, are you going to kill her or not? <laughs> you know, because Rita, like, Rita seems like she's out for blood, like she's out for revenge. But I don't, it's like, I don't think she actually has it in her to pull the trigger. Because the thing is, if she really felt the way that she really felt, if she was really trying to kill Madame Rouge, there wouldn't have been all that talking. She would have tried to choke her. She would have tried to punch her. And then it, it was so bad to the point where even Madame Rouge was just like, well, if you got beef, bitch. <laughs> she was like, why don't you do something? And then, you know, Rita attempted to do something. And then Madame Rouge turned into a bird, you know, and then she flew away. And then the whole thing about like, oh, I'm a bird, I'm a bird, I'm a bird. And then she turns into a bird. Come to find out the only reason why she turns into a bird is because one of her other friends was allergic to cats. <laughs> so she could have easily just been a cat. I thought that actually was going to mean something, but apparently it didn't. Madame Rouge flies away. Rita's pissed because she's just like, oh, you know, like I must do something. I must stop Rouge once and for all. So she goes back to the mansion to try to re, re try to re recruit recruit the uh, the rest of the Doom Patrol. Like, well, the the original members of the Doom Patrol. Now that the personas, you know, from before are gone, she's trying to get the OGs back so she so they can help her take out Madame Rouge. Madame Rouge then actually goes down to Florida. And she goes to the retirement home that the Brotherhood of Evil are staying at. And then, and I thought that was a very funny scene because she was like ringing the doorbell. She's like, um, hello. She was like, Madame Rouge. <laughs> you know, she was just like, I would, she's like, you sent me on a mission and I'm back. You know, she's like, uh, where is everybody? And then they were just like, yo, we're retired, bitch. And then she was just like, I'm here for the Brotherhood of Evil. And then, you know, like they let her in and then the, like the brain went to go talk to her, you know, to, to find out why she was there because he thought that she was like a groupie or something. But when he found that it was actually like the Madame Rouge, he wanted to speak to her. And I'm still on the fence with this Brotherhood of Evil because it's like I'm I'm coming. I'm After this episode, I feel a lot better about them than I did previously. But and I understand this is the Doom Patrol. But the fact that the Brotherhood of Evil has kind of been comical, it's that's really bothering me. But they did get a little serious towards the end, and we'll touch on that. So, like I said, I'm coming around on the Brotherhood of Evil, just 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 a smidgen, just a tad. So then, you know, so so the the brain is talking to Madame Rouge, and then she was just like, yeah, she's like, you know, you sent me. He said we sent you on a time travel version of a milk run, and you never came back. And then she was like, oh, for you it was seventy years. She was like, for me it was seven minutes. But then she said that, you know, she's like, I lost my memory. And then she's like, you know, because I lost my memories, you know, she was just like, I, I went to kill Niles Coulter, but I forgot the mission. But she's like, now remember. And she's like, we'll destroy his legacy. And then he was like, first of all, bitch, he's like, you only been here for a cup of coffee. And you talking about how we gonna destroy now's Calter. He said that you have to earn our help, you know, like you have to earn your spot back into the Brotherhood of Evil because he's like, the one mission that we gave you, you didn't even accomplish that. So, you know, he said, we're gonna give you a mission. And then if you, and then if you succeed in this mission, then we'll help you with, you know, with taking down Niles Calter once and for all. And it still isn't explained what beef Niles had with Madame Rouge and vice versa. Because Niles had said, you know, a few episodes back, he was like, oh, you're the most vile woman and you disgust me. And Madame Rouge out here talking about fuck Niles Coulter and everything that he stands for. And I'm like, I'd like to know the beef, you know? Like, I'd like to know the riff, you know, between Madame Rouge and Niles Coulter. Hopefully we'll get the answer for that in the season finale, but we, you know, or maybe it is something we'll address in, you know, in the next season, but we'll, we'll see. But I definitely, like, I would like an answer for that at some point. You know, so then, so he's like, all right, so they gave her a task, and then she went to go complete the task. Now, each individual member of the Doom Patrol, they're 
trying to come to terms with what they went through during the internal flagellation. Jane was in the underground and she was talking to Kay. And she was asking, because remember, like before, like all the personas are gone. So she was asking Kay, she was like, you know, what happened to everybody? And then she was just like, who cares? She's like, they're gone and I'm free. And then, you know, Jane was in Jane. And then Kay was just like, yo, I'm going upstairs. She was like, I'm going topside. And then she was like, are you sure you want to do that? You know, and then she was just like, you know, we can fix things. We can bring the others back. And Kay was like, nope, I'm out, bitch. And then she just like got on the trolley and she went up to, you know, take over the body. So now Kay is in control of her own body. And it's very weird because... She has the mind of a child, but she's a grown adult. So, you know, so Jane, though, ended up walking around the underground trying to find everybody else. And then she kept hearing like these weird, like screaming voices, like this weird, like horror thing. But she was just, but she, you know, she decided to investigate a little bit. But her main focus was basically Kay and what Kay was doing. Larry ended up having a dream about, you know, Cliff and Jane basically saying he's unfit for fatherhood duty. And then when he snapped out of it, Larry realized that he has an emotional connection to that little like worm creature. Like he can he can sense like the worm's thoughts, the words can sense the worm can sense his thoughts, and they kind of bounce back and forth each other. The thing kept like lighting up and kept like electrocuting him, and he kept getting shocked. And Larry said he felt like that was happening because the creature was just like it was vibing off of like bad energy, like negative energy, which is why I was getting upset. I feel like this thing is gonna hatch into a negative spirit that's gonna take over Larry's body. <laughs> you know, but I don't know why it had to be in the form of a cocoon, but that's just weird. But we'll see what happens with that but Larry was pretty much okay with the whole thing like he was committed to like fathering this parasite and you know he was just walking around the house he was on his way to go to meet up with the rest of the group Vic was the most interesting out of the bunch because he you know he woke up on the operating table and his dad was there he was talking to his dad and when he was talking to his dad his dad basically just like instead of saying something like wow you look good son or like I'm proud of you or like I'm happy for you if you're happy his dad told him a story about how when Vic was at one of his football games his dad tried to go to the football game. And then he said that there was a new security guard that worked at Star Labs and he had forgot his ID. And when he forgot his ID, that security guard who was white, you know, he ran up on him, pinned him down, you know, and like completely disrespected him. And he said that he had a choice to make in that moment because he said that he could take the guard. Like he was physically, he was physically stronger than the guard. He was like, I could have taken him. But then he was just like, had I done that, you know, he could have he could have arrested me like something bad could happen. And then he said, I had to think about my legacy and think about my future because he said they're going to build like wings and like they're going to name they're going to name buildings after me, like at Star Labs. Like he's like my he said like, my presence as far as the future, leaving my legacy behind was more important than me standing up for myself in that one little moment. But then he said that but it did make him feel a certain way. And when, when Vic got in, you know, because of his own drama, when Vic got into his accident, he said that he he never wants his son to have to go through what he went through. He said he wants to he wanted to build his son a suit of armor to protect him from the evil in the world and all the horror in the world. He was like, yes, I could have done the synthetic skin, but I turned you into cyborg to make sure what happened to me would never happen to you again. And Vic was just like, you know, he's like, I didn't know that happened to you, but he was just like, yo, you missed the, he's like, he said that, I understand the reason why you did what you did, but that wasn't the answer. And he said, like, you're not even, he said, like, you're, like, ashamed of me now. He said, you can't even look at me. He's like, you don't even want to give me a hug. He said, you're not even happy for me that I got my life back. He was like, you just see me as, like, the as like the thing that you didn't want. You know, and then like, he got, you know, he got mad and he cursed him out. His dad actually re referenced the internal flagellation. And I guess in his moment, he, he had a conversation with himself with his deepest, darkest shame or, his, like, his pain. He had a conversation with himself about the moment where he decided to turn Victor into cyborg you know, to protect him from like the horror of what he had to do, you know? So it, you know, they said that, that Vic, Vic, Vic got mad and he walked out because like he was hurt, you know, like his feelings was hurt because they said his dad wasn't happy for him. So now we're back at the house. Cliff shows up, you know, like Vic shows up. I guess we can't call him cyborg anymore. Vic shows up. And when Cliff sees that Vic, you know, like got his face back and got his body back, he's a little jealous. And then, you know, like Kay was there. She was talking to Rita. Rita was trying to like rally the troops. Larry showed up and nobody was happy for Vic. Like, everybody like when Rita saw Vic she's like my god what did you do <laughs> you know and he was just like what I got my life back and then you know Rita because Rita needed the Doom Patrol she needed Cyborg she needed Crazy Jane she needed you know Negative Man and she needed Robot Man but because of the internal flagellation you now got stuck with Victor Stone Kay 
and uh, and Jane called him mummy daddy, <laughs> mummy daddy, like Larry. And then Cliff was the only person that was still him. And then he was just like, yo, he was like, you know, if you he said, if you need my help, I'll help you kick some ass. And then she was like, great, Cliff. And then after that, like the doorbell rang and ended up being Cliff's daughter. And then he ran off to go be with his daughter. And then, you know, Rita got mad because she was like, this happens every time, which was true because in last season, when Dorothy was at the circus and she was getting run up on, that was his daughter's wedding. Like every single time something serious happens to Cliff, like, like to the Doom Patrol, they need Cliff's help. His daughter always comes between and he always chooses like the Doom Patrol over his daughter. But this time he actually chose his daughter and he went to go have a conversation with his daughter. So now Rita's pissed because she's just like, you know, the rest, she's like, you all are losers. But she was trying to figure out what she can do with the team that she has because her whole thing was just getting revenge on Madame Rouge. Cliff was talking to his daughter and his daughter said that she had found like the like the 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 pain the, the brain medication that he was taking, you know, like for his um I believe his Alzheimer's or his, his brain tumor, like the issue he was his Parkinson's. Like she she found the pills for that, and then she was just like, you know, what, Dad, she's like, I'm gonna make you an appointment with a real doctor so we can try to fix your situation, you know. So then, you know, so so she went to go make the phone call, and then after that, like Rita had a conversation with Larry, you know, talking about how she's trying to get a revenge on Madame Rouge. Victor and Kay had a nice little conversation where they shared a moment together. Talking talking about how each other are the same. And then Victor ended up interviewing Kay because she said she was the only person who wasn't interviewed, you know, because Niles interviewed like all of her personalities. And then Rita had walked, walked over to Cliff and then she was just like, listen, she was like, Madame Rouge is hunting us. And I think it's a little peculiar that after what you did, your daughter is just so willing to give you a second chance. She was like, that could be Madame Rouge in disguise. And Cliff got mad at first, but then he was just like, he really had to think about it. And he was just like, yeah, you got a point. Cause he was like, yo, I don't deserve. And he even said, he was like, yo, why don't I deserve? He said, why don't I deserve to be happy? Why can't I be happy? He was like, that's bullshit. He said, how come everything with me has to be like some underlying like secret thing, you know? And then he, but then he down the side, he knew she had a point. So then they go back into the kitchen and go try to verify the daughter's identity. You know, he sees the baby there he picks up the baby and then his daughter and the baby come downstairs and then we realize that the baby is madame rouge in disguise and i felt bad for, i felt bad for victor because as soon as he saw madame rouge he tried to use his arm cannon and it didn't work k immediately bounced she didn't even stick around to help because she doesn't have powers and she still has the mind of a child so she just straight up dipped and then she kind of like passed out and then when it took us to the underground like she left she you know she left the real world and she went back to the underground and then when she got off the train Jane saw her and she was like, what happened? She's like, what's going on up there? And then she was just like, oh, we're under attack. And then Kay just dipped. So then Jane, you know, like she went back upstairs to go see what was happening. But, you know, she got taken out and beat up as well. So then Madame Rouge basically beat up the entire Doom Patrol and she stole Cliff. Like the, the plan all along was for her to take Cliff. Like she took Cliff and then she bounced. So now Rita was just like, oh, we have to track down Madame Rouge. So she was like, Victor, she was like, find out their location. And then Vic, and then Vic didn't have grit anymore. So he had to use the computer. And then, you know, she told Larry to fire up the bus, Larry. And then she had to have a conversation with Jane because Jane was like, yo, she was like, there's something going on in the underground. She was like, I ain't got no powers. And then, you know, and then Jane was like, I'm not the, I'm not the ideal situation. I'm not the ideal person that you need for this mission. And then Rita was like, none of you are the ideal person. She was like, y'all ain't shit. She, she was like, there's nothing you can do to help me but she said that it's about cliff now cliff's been taken and we gotta do what we gotta do you know so like vic finds the location there in florida everybody gets on the bus and they go flying down the florida to go rescue cliff while they're on the bus the truth comes out with everybody victor like vic found out that even larry wasn't happy you know about his transformation because Cliff even said at one point, he was just like, oh, I went through the internal flagellation and, you know, like my shit's not cured. Like, you know, my shit's not clean. He said, how come Vic gets a happy ending? He gets like brand new smooth skin. And then even Larry, Larry was just like, you know, because because Larry, you know, because like Larry was arguing with Rita and then Victor took up for Larry. And then Rita was like, you're only taking his side because, you know, he he wished you well, you know, with your, you know, with your thing. And then he was just like, well, I'm, he's no, because he was like, because he said he's happy for you with the, you know, with the whole tr skin transformation. And then he was like, I never said I was happy for him. And then Vic was like, hold up, you're not happy for me. And then Larry was like, dead ass. He was just like, yo, I agree with Cliff. He was like, yo, how come his happy ending looks like this? And my happy ending is a squid worm, you know, that, you know, that shoots off electrical powers. He was just like, yo, it's not fair. That's when Vic was just, and I, 
I was mad for Vic too, because I was like, yo, you hating ass sons of bitches. <laughs> and then like like Vic even said, he was just like, so nobody's happy for me. He's like, basically everybody's just jealous, you know? And I, I'd have pulled that bus over until everybody kissed my ass. <laughs> but Jane would try to calm everybody down. And she's like, oh, it's not about us, it's about Cliff. And he was, and then Larry was like, is that what Rita told you? Then she was, he was like, why don't you tell them the real reason, you know, that we're going down there and it's not because of Cliff. And then Rita basically like came clean and she told them, she was just like, yes, yeah. she was like, it wasn't about you all. She was like, it was about me getting my revenge on Madame Rouge because she flat out told them. She said, when I went back in time, I forgot you all. She's like, I lost my memories. I started a new life. She's like, I know to y'all, I was only gone for seven days, but she said, I was gone for like 30, 40 years. I built a life, I fell in love. And then she said that when I when I got my memories back, when I came back to the present, she said, you are all strangers to me. She said, I don't recognize any of you. And the only reason why I'm even asking for your help is so I can take down Madame Ruse. She flat out said, I escaped. And this shit's like sucking me back in. And then everybody was just looking at her like, well, fuck you too, bitch. You know, like it was, but you know, but that that's that's real though, because first of all, it makes me question if 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 Rita ever really liked all of them to begin with outside of Larry. But she so easily was able to forget them, you know, because of the new life that she built for herself. It's just like like she gonna have to answer to that one because if she can't, because like she can't get the past back. And then you know, Larry also even brought up he was like, "Yo, you were in a time machine." He said that you could have saved us from dying when we were in the Poconos, but he said because you desperately wanted to save your relationship and wanted to save the person you loved, you went back in time to stop us from escaping to allow the loop to continue. And then she's like, "Yes, I made I made the sacrifices," you know. And then they like everybody turned into this whole big thing. It's like you know, then they got into an argument. Cause like everybody should be mad at Rita about that because she like she didn't even have any remorse about it. She wasn't just like, oh, I was happy to get my memories back, you know, to be with my friends. She was just like, yo, I was mad. At, she she flat out said, I'm mad. I remember y'all. <laughs> she you know, and, but you know, say la vie. You know, it's like that's that's what it is. And then while they were all arguing. Kay went to like some secret room in the underground where I guess there's like a monster down there that sucked up all the personas and then it attacked Kay or Kay ran off screaming and then it caused Jane to project like, you know, emotion like out of her body. I don't know if she has superpowers or not, but the emotion that she projected, it, it startled the little squid worm thing that Larry had and then that whole thing electrocuted the bus and the bus did 15 flips and like flipped over and crashed. So the episode ended with the Doom Patrol crashing on the bus. When Cliff woke up, he was having a conversation with the brain and the brain basically told him that he found the blueprints for his robot body online. But he said that he was jealous because the brain wanted more than nothing than to have a body of his own. But then he was just like, why does Niles Coulter, he said, how did Niles Coulter build you a fucking body? And Niles Coulter's not a mechanic. Like he's not an engineer, he's not an engineering genius. So, but he does dabble in magic. And he said that your body is the result of both magic and science, which makes you special and make you unique. But he said, but I'm gonna take your brain out of your body because you don't appreciate it. And I'm gonna swap it for mine because I would die to have arms, legs, and feet. Madame Rouge was like, yes. And then after, you know, after, you know, we do the body swap, we're gonna go back to the mansion and we're gonna kill the Doom Patrol. And especially Rita, she will, you know, like she will kneel before me as I watch her suffer. And then, you know, and then the brain was just like, yeah, probably not. And then Moloch came and like knocked out Madame Rouge. So apparently, they double crossed Madame Rouge because he was just like, he used to say, I ain't fucking with you either because you didn't do your job, you know, like you like you were supposed to back then. And they put Madame Rouge on a gurney and like rolled her off a cliff and that was weird. And, you know, they also said they put a meta, meta human dampener in, like in her system and I said they threw her off a cliff. So they threw Madame Rouge off a cliff and then the bus that the Doom Patrol was on like crashed. I feel like Madame Rouge is gonna bump into the bus. I mean, I don't know how far they got to Florida, but Madame Rouge is probably gonna bump into them on the bus and they're all gonna team up to try to, to, try to save Cliff and then Rita's gonna beef with Madame Rouge because they're on the same team and on the same side. And I'm actually here for that because that sounds like that'd be definitely be entertaining. And then finally, the brain got what he wanted. He put him, he put Cliff's brain in a jar and I don't know why he just didn't put him in the robot, but he put Cliff's brain in a jar and then, you know, he basically got a chance to do what he always wanted to do. He got to live his life. He got to go dancing. He went to parties. He was celebrating. He was doing the damn thing. And I'm just like, storyline wise, that actually makes perfect sense. And it wasn't until they captured Cliff, that's when the Brotherhood of Evil actually started taking this shit seriously. The comedy kind of like died down for a little bit and it got more serious, especially with him in the body. So I'm like, all right, 
now I can kind of come around a little bit on the Brotherhood of Evil because the plan makes perfect sense. If you're the brain and if you're a brain that's stuck in a robot jar, that's basically you like, like you're a brain that's basically stuck in a Roomba, you know, why would you not want Cliff's body? That actually makes perfect sense. And I hope in the season finale, we don't get Cliff's brain back and this storyline continues over into the next season because that said they can actually do something with this and build something with this. But that was it. You know, that's how the episode ended. And thank you for tuning in. So we got one more episode left, one more episode of Doom Patrol. Let me know your thoughts, your questions and your concerns how do you think this episode is going to end you know did you watch the episode you know when this review went live you know like what did you think you know what are your predictions like i said share them and we'll talk about it check me out on twitter check me out on instagram always on facebook always on youtube as well where we can like i said we can talk we can share our questions our comments and our concerns also go to imaginative visions on youtube and check out the interview that i did with justin it was an interview where justin interviews a lot of indie talent such as myself I was on episode five of his interview series where he spoke to me about my journey through the independent scene and doing the things that I do with my YouTube channel, with my film and my acting, et cetera, et cetera. Link will be in the description for all those that want to check it out. So that was it, guys. Thank you for tuning in. We have the, se the series, I keep saying season, the series finale of Supergirl is coming soon. We still got Batwoman. We still got Legends of Tomorrow. The season finale review of Stargirl is on the channel, so check that out as well. And we're still doing Young Justice until the Flash Armageddon cross over happens next week. So thanks for tuning in, guys. So for the Doom Patrol, one more episode to go. And for the Evil Patrol, take care. And about this, yeah.